Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and the second of the PvE operations. This time it's called Aegis and this one's actually quite easy to be honest. Uh, in fact I would say this is the easiest by far. Uh, this was the second attempt at it. The first attempt netted four stars and this is going to be five stars. Now with the first one with Newport it wasn't that difficult to beat it but beating it with all five stars that was the real challenge and the more stars that you get the more XP that you seem to get out of a successful operation. Now for this one this is really easy to just farm the XP basically you can actually get quite good XP results if you get all five stars as you're going to see in this one and um, apparently this wasn't always so. Uh, during the testing on the, uh, uh, the test server uh, this was actually one of the most difficult ones uh, by contrast and the main thing, so I'm told, that they've changed is the uh, the ship selection. I didn't get to play this one on the test server myself. I got to play, uh, I think, two of four, and um, I, I missed the rest, and I couldn't play the rest because I couldn't get together seven people to play, well, six other people, to play the uh, the missions. And it's also maybe worth noting here uh, that if you missed out on Newport, you can still do Newport, it's just you need to get six other people together. It's not in the the random queue anymore, if you see what I mean. There's no um, public matchmaking for it. If you can get a group of six other people together, however, you can just play it anyway and either, you know, do it because you want to or do it because you miss the rewards or whatever. So Aegis is fairly straightforward. Uh, you've basically got to defeat several groups of ships. You get two um, initial groups one that sails by broadside which is very very nice uh, one of the difficulties with Newport especially for the battleships was that everything was sailing towards you so you couldn't get those nice broadside shots that's not true in Aegis in Aegis you get broadside ships for days now the second group actually they are kind of um, coming towards you from the northwest but uh, they do start to turn sideways, so you're still going to get broadside shots. And it's really only the escorting group, or the main escorting group, where they are uh, protecting the, uh, the, uh, the Liberty ships that you're supposed to be rescuing. Uh, they are more broadside, uh, less broadside rather, on towards you. But by that point you can make your way up the 3-4 line on this side of the islands, potentially. Now, uh, what seems to be optimal for this mode is mostly, um, uh, I would say mostly cruisers, maybe one or two battleships to, to tank the damage because tanking the damage is quite useful in this one, uh, but you definitely want at least one Cleveland in your group, and having a carrier is also very useful. Uh, in Newport, you could farm a lot of damage in a carrier. Um, I only had the Independence available, but if you take the Strike loadout for the Independence, you can still do a lot. And uh, as with Newport, I mean, you get a bot carrier turning up partway through to help you out, so the fact that you've got no fighters doesn't really matter. And if you've got Cleveland, it doubly doesn't matter, because they can just take care of the planes for you. So we've gotten rid of that initial group, uh, we've now got this uh, second spawn group to take care of, and then there's the third group with the Liberty ships that have spawned. Now there's two ways it can go with that main group of Liberty ships. Um, there's the, like Newport, there's several kind of shifted conditions, so if you don't get a secondary, um, if you don't get some of the secondaries, potentially you can then make it up by getting a new secondary that, that gets introduced. So in this case, um, what can happen is, um, for instance, if the Straws get sunk, the Straws is your flotilla commander, you can go and then pick up the commander from the Straws, and you've got two minutes to do so, and then that counts as a secondary condition that you've completed. So, uh, if the Straws races ahead and gets himself killed, as he tends to do, then it doesn't matter, because you can still get that as a secondary condition. The other main secondary condition that can happen is that if the the main escorting group around the Liberty ships gets down to about the F line, I think it is, it's not entirely clear, but if they get down to the F line and you haven't sunk them by that point, a group of three enemy battleships spawns in addition to the aircraft carriers that are going to spawn. Now the carriers aren't that much of a problem, you've got a tier 4, 5 and 6 Japanese carrier, and it's more that they can just put out a lot of different plane squads against you that is more the issue but if you've got a Cleveland as I have here with an AA spec yeah you're going to chew on a lot of planes very quickly 
The battleships, however, can be a lot trickier. If you've gotten to the point where the battleships are spawning, then you're usually in trouble anyway. Uh, the only battleships that spawn otherwise are Ishizushis, that you still have to watch out for. They can still be nasty with their HE and with their AP guns, because uh, if you're on a cruiser, then you don't have that much armor, and if you're on a battleship, well, then you can burn, and there is a very high fire chance from those Ishizushi shells. So don't take the Ishizushis for granted. Don't just dismiss them. They can be quite dangerous. Um, but yeah, uh, what can happen is if that, uh, that escorting group gets down to around the F line, uh, you will, at the back of the map, at uh, the A line, get an Amagi, a Fuso, and a Congo spawning. And that's happened a couple of times. And like I say, if that happens, it's usually a sign that your group is already in trouble because you haven't killed this, those escorting ships fast enough. So some AP into that uh, Ishizushi. I mean, I, I picked the, the Cleveland for this one because it seemed like a, a nice, safe choice. Um, but really, uh, I think most ships that you care to take in this one, you can do reasonably well in. I took the Graf Spey in one and had like 150k damage and we got, I think, four stars on that one. Um, I've tried out the Fuzo. Um, the Kamikaze kind of works, or if you've got the Fujin. Um, most of the Japanese destroyers I wouldn't say are that good. I think the only one where I really struggled to contribute at all was when I was in the uh, Hatsuharu. Because it's got those very slow 10 kilometer torps. And because there's so many planes flying around, the torps do get spotted and the bot ships do take avoiding action. So not that useful. And I would think the Fubuki wouldn't be that useful either. But any of the gunboat destroyers, the, the Ognavoy or the Anshan, uh, the Farragut, um, they would all be quite handy. So we've got an Alba, as you can see, heading up the four line. You might be thinking, oh, that's, that's a terrible idea. We split off from the group. Well, not really, because the, the spawns in this one are fixed. One of the things with Newport was that um, you had some variation as to where things could spawn, and especially trying to rescue the, uh, the friendly AI Lexington that spawned at around the 10 minute mark. Uh, it would generally spawn at the opposite side from where most of your ships are. And that could be a bit of a problem, getting over there to save it in time, especially if you didn't have a carry. In this one, however, you know exactly where everything is going to spawn all the time. And there's a little bit of variation in which ships spawn where, but generally speaking, it's pretty uh, predictable. So there might be more or less Ishizushis in any given group of ships, or there might be more or less Miyokos in any given group of uh, ships, but they will always spawn in the same location regardless. So we're working our way through these escorting ships without too much difficulty. We possibly will lose this Jaws. Um, this one's lasted longer than most. They do tend to go quite gung-ho. Uh, you'll have noted at the start that you'll always get a, a bot uh, smith. Uh, not a smith. No, that is an actual ship. It's called smith. Uh, a, a bot mayhan. And uh, that also tends to die fairly soon as well, but uh, it'll, it'll always put down that first uh, bit of smoke for you. And if you're in a ship that has your own smoke, well, so much the better. Anyway, so I'm trying to head up towards um, around about A5 because the carriers will always spawn there. Um, the moment we've killed this for attacker, this last escorting ship, that's when they will spawn. And I'm actually a bit out of position in terms of jumping the carriers the moment that they spawn, but I didn't know that yet because I'd only played this once before, and I wasn't sure yet if there was some variation. So what happens is you get two carriers spawn in A5, and then you'll get a main group of enemies will spawn in the northeast corner along with the third carrier, and you actually get a secondary for getting all three carriers. So I'm not in position to get those carriers the moment they spawn, but with my big AA aura, 7.2 kilometers, as you can see, I'm just absolutely shredding all the Hosho and uh, uh, Zuiho planes. The Ryujo, however, has spawned over on the other side. Too far for my aura, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Just um, they haven't been able to do that much damage. And the carriers will go for the Liberty ships. So almost uh, in this one, um, it, it can come down to you as a player having to sacrifice your ship to to bait the attention of the bots in order to save the Liberty ships. Because if you get all the Liberty ships to the exit point, and it just has to be the lead Liberty ship that gets into the exit point, so you don't have to wait for all of them, um, then uh, that's it. You've, you've gotten that secondary. So it can be worth sacrificing your ship to, to get the attention of the uh, not only the carriers, but the enemy ships as well. 
So this uh, Zuiho has just about had it. We've also got more planes incoming. I don't have defensive up at the moment, but just the uh, AA that I've got available should be more than enough to uh, shred some more planes. So it's not going to be another 27 planes in uh, 30 seconds or whatever it was I had previously, but uh, I still should get a few more plane kills out of this. Anyway, so that's the Ryusho down. On to the Hosho. The Hoshos are actually a little more annoying to deal with because you can't citadel them in the same way as the, uh, the Ryusho. Or maybe I'm just aiming at the wrong places, I don't know. But the Ryusho seem quite easy to just uh, get broadside citadels on. Uh, not the Ryusho, it's the Zuiho. Or was it another Ryusho? I was not paying attention there. Anyway, um, I think it was another Ryusho actually. Never mind, not that it matters. So, um, yeah, the Hosho, you just have to kind of spam with HE, in my experience, and uh, uh, it'll go down. So that's two of the three carriers. If we can get the third carrier, it's fine. And if we can uh, get the all the Liberty ships to the exit, well, um, we actually seem to be with a very, very good chance of doing just that. In fact, there's a risk we won't be able to kill this carrier before the Liberty ships get to the exit. Now we've got a Kirov that's actually down there and our independence is near the group as well. Uh, there's also a bot Saipan that spawned and is uh, helping us from the south. I think we lost our battleships at this point and the battleships do tend to get focused down with HE quite hard. So if you have a battleship, and uh, that blind fire was completely off base, if you have a battleship captain at tier 6 that, that has survivability skills, it's going to do you very, very well in this particular operation, uh, particularly the fire prevention skill. So, I mean, even taking a higher uh, tier captain in something like the Arizona, for instance, or the Mutsu, um, you probably would do reasonably well. And even um, compared to the, the previous one where it, there was a lot of that element of tanking the damage for your team, um, you can still do, I think, much more reliable damage in a battleship in this in this particular operation, just because you get so many more broadside cruisers to shoot at and broadside Ishizushis. Overall, though, I've had the most consistent results in uh, cruisers and uh, carriers. So it was at that moment that the uh, the Liberty ships got to the exit point, and as you can see, we uh, finished with all five stars and. That was all right. I, I thought that was, um, you know, this one's a lot more relaxing, I think, than the first one. The first one, especially with a group of random strangers, could be quite frustrating to get everybody to understand what they needed to do. But having said that, I've still been in with a couple of groups where uh, we've lost somehow, despite this being actually really easy, because everybody was just failing to do the damage or sailing off to the western part of the map. For some reason, um, like you know, to the, literally to the, the little islands at the, the western edge, I've, I've seen like two or three battleships sailing around in that area, which was bizarre. Um, so it's still possible to lose, but you have to be, I think, in with a pretty bad group of people to lose this, and it's quite hard to to carry it solo. Having said it's easy, um, it's still something that requires a team effort to actually get finished, especially if you want to get all five conditions met, or all five secondaries. Um, you might have the best chance of maybe doing it in something like a review show, uh, but even so, you're just going to struggle a bit because the planes, uh, not review show, no, yes, it is the review show, the tier six. Um, uh, but yeah, you might struggle just to, to do damage fast enough, but uh, even with the strike independence, I still had a couple of matches where I was over 200,000 damage done. One of them where we still lost because the rest of the team was really very bad. Anyway, as you can see, um, as you may have noted, there was a very good uh, XP result on that, 1800 base XP, and uh, what was it, a quarter of a million credits made? So that's not bad. So yeah, this one's worth farming. This one's absolutely worth farming for, for those tier six dailies, and if nothing else, of course, with the ranked season almost upon us, uh, getting a little bit more XP in your tier six captains is no bad thing. So, um, the next one is, I forget, I should have looked this up beforehand, but never mind. Uh, we'll see what the next one is. It, it's, it's either going to be the base attack or the carrier escort. And uh, of those two, I thought the carrier escort one on the test server was the more challenging. But as we saw with this one, of course, they might have 
tweaked things a bit from the test server to the live server so I shall be interested to see how those work out so um yes two or four down and um, even though this one is far far easier overall than Newport it's still enjoyable and I've been just enjoying this as a thing overall so um, yeah big thumbs up so far I really hope Wargaming uh, sticks with this as a thing and we just get a, a steady drip of, of new missions you know even like one or two a month new ones added to the game uh, it could be a nice little extra different thing and it's nice and relaxing ish to go in and uh, and to, to play this and having done it with a group of six other people um, that's fun in by in of itself and uh, just you know having everyone trying to coordinate and and do things and even doing that with Newport um, it was still surprisingly tricky to get all five secondary conditions met even when everyone was uh, communicating and trying to coordinate but uh, see what the future ones bring. So hopefully you've enjoyed this replay and if you have you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already and as always stay tuned for more.